Chemists have spent a lot of time and energy determining the value of delta H for chemical reactions. However, for some reactions, it is difficult to measure the energy of the reaction. In addition, it is simply not convenient to have to experimentally determine the energy for every possible chemical reaction. For that reason, it is useful to know how to determine the enthalpy of a reaction without actually doing an experiment. Because enthalpy is a state function, so is the change in enthalpy. Specifically, this means that for a chemical reaction, how we get from the reactants to the products does not matter. Only what the reactants and products are. In other words, if we can find any path from the reactants to the products and determine the delta H for that path, then that must be the delta H for all paths from the reactants to the products. This principle allows us to find a convenient path from the reactants to the products and also allows us to determine the value of delta H for a reaction without actually doing the experiment to measure the energy for the reaction. This is why we could use bond energies to estimate the value of delta H and is the basis for Hess's law. The statement of Hess's law says that if I carry out a reaction by a series of steps whose enthalpy changes I know, then the enthalpy change for the reaction is simply the sum of the enthalpy changes for those steps. In the example shown, we are reacting methane gas with oxygen gas to make carbon dioxide gas and liquid water. However, we are doing this in two steps. In the first, we make carbon monoxide gas and liquid water. And in the second, we take the carbon monoxide gas and combine it with more oxygen to make CO2 gas. In general, the form of the mathematical equation looks like this. Delta H for the overall reaction equals delta H for reaction 1 plus delta H for reaction 2 plus delta H for reaction 3 and so on until we run out of reactions. Here are the two reactions. CH4 gas plus 1 half O2 gas gives CO gas plus 2 H2O liquid. CO gas plus 1 half O2 gas gives CO2 gas. These add to give CH4 gas plus O2 gas gives CO2 gas plus 2 H2O liquid. So delta H for reaction 3, the sum, equals delta H for reaction 1 plus delta H for reaction 2. We know the delta H values for the two reactions given, minus 607 kilojoules and minus 283 kilojoules, respectively. So delta H for the third is the sum of the two delta H values, which is minus 890 kilojoules. Since any reactions that add together to produce a desired reaction will have the same net enthalpy, it is most convenient to define a type of reaction to use that will be consistent and simple in concept to work with. Chemists have done this with standard formation reactions. Standard formation reaction is defined as the reaction for the formation of one mole of a substance from its elements with everything in its standard form. The standard form is the physical state of the substance at 25 degrees Celsius and 1 atmosphere pressure. For solutions, the standard state is a 1 molar solution. The enthalpy of formation, the symbol for which is delta H sub F, is the enthalpy of the formation reaction. The standard enthalpy of formation symbol delta H zero sub F, is the enthalpy of the formation reaction when everything is in its standard state. This table of some common standard enthalpies of formation is shown in this slide. A larger, though still very incomplete, table 
is given in Appendix C in the back of your book. More complete tables for the standard enthalpies of formation can be found in the CRC Handbook of Chemistry and Physics and other chemistry reference works. One convenient way to think about reactions, though this is almost never the way reactions actually occur, is to think about them occurring in this way. First, take all the reactant compounds and break them all into their individual elements in their standard states. Next, take those elements and recombine them in the new way to form the new compounds. These reactions are either decomposition reactions, step one, or synthesis reactions, step two. In both cases, the elements in their standard states are on one side of the reaction and a single compound is on the other. Since a decomposition reaction is the reverse of a synthesis reaction, these two are really both standard formation reactions. Let's look at how we calculate the value of delta H for a reaction. The reaction shown is the combustion of propane. We will do three reactions to accomplish this, three steps. The first step is to decompose the propane into carbon solid and hydrogen gas. This requires an input of 103.85 kilojoules of energy. That is, delta H is plus 103.85 kilojoules. The O2 gas is already an element in its standard state. The second step is the formation of three moles of CO2 from the carbon and some of the oxygen. This releases 3 times 393.5 kilojoules of energy and delta H equals minus 1,181 kilojoules. Step three is the formation of four moles of H2O liquid from the hydrogen and the rest of the oxygen. This releases four times 285.8 kilojoules of energy and delta H equals minus 1,143 kilojoules. The numbers are taken from the table on slide 6, or from Appendix C. Note that, because I had to use the decomposition form of the formation reaction for C3H8 gas, I needed to change the sign of the enthalpy from negative to positive. Also note that, because I made 3 moles of CO2 gas and 4 moles of H2O liquid, I needed to multiply those enthalpies by 3 and 4, respectively. The full application of Hess's law requires the addition of the three reactions to show that the desired reaction is produced. Now I can add the three enthalpies to get the delta H of reaction equals minus 2,220 kilojoules. The same process would work for any set of reactions and is sometimes used with a set of combustion reactions. However, this is more work than we usually need to do because we choose the standard formation reactions. Any compound in the reactants will need to have its formation reaction reversed and will therefore have the sign of its enthalpy reversed. In addition, the coefficient of the compound in the balanced reaction determines how much we need to multiply the standard enthalpy by. Finally, since the reactions involve the elements, Elements that appear in the reaction will appear without us worrying about them. This leads us to the following equation for calculating the delta H for a reaction without doing Hess's law fully. The symbol sigma means sum, adding the values. The n and m are the coefficients of the substances in the balanced equation and the delta H zero F is the standard enthalpy of formation for the substance. Here we see the propane example worked out using this method. The standard enthalpy of formation for CO2 is minus 393.5 kilojoules per mole and for H2O liquid is minus 285.8 kilojoules per mole. The standard enthalpy of formation for C3H8 is minus 103.85 kilojoules per mole. We need to multiply the CO2 by 3 and the H2O by 4. 
Where does the zero for the standard enthalpy of formation for O2 come from? Think for a moment about the standard formation reaction for O2. The reactant would be O2 gas, the element in its standard state, and the product would be O2 gas. In other words, nothing changes. This is true for any element in its standard state and means that delta HF zero is zero for any element in its standard state. Multiplying the terms out, while not paying close attention to sig figs, we get this equation, which simplifies to this and gives us a value for delta H of minus 2,219.9 kilojoules.